Kamusta? Ako si Darren Espanto, Batang Pilipino, Batang ASEAN. Bilang kabataang Pilipino, kasama tayo sa mas malaking samahan ng Association of Southeast Asian Nations o ASEAN. Isang community of nations na unang pinangarap sa ASEAN Declaration noong 1967 at nabuo noong 2015. At bilang isang komunidad, tayo ay may iisang pangarap para sa kinabukasan, ang ASEAN Community Vision 2025. Ito ang susundin natin sa pagbuo ng isang rules-based, people-oriented, at people-centered ASEAN community. Kasama dito ang mga blueprint para palakasin ang tatlong pillar ng ASEAN. At siyang magiging gabay natin para sa isang maunlad, masaya, at payapang rehiyon. Kaya laging tandaan, Think ASEAN, feel ASEAN! ASEAN, a region of opportunities with a young and growing population of more than 620 million people. By connecting ASEAN, we connect these opportunities. Over the past 50 years, ASEAN has shown significant progress and benefits from its regional integration efforts. Its GDP nearly doubled to reach US $2.6 trillion between 2007 and 2016. We can deliver more. The Master Plan on ASEAN Connectivity 2025 aims to achieve a seamless, integrated and comprehensively connected ASEAN. This will promote competitiveness, inclusiveness and a greater sense of community. What does that mean for you? The Master Plan will improve the way you live, work and travel. It will enhance the physical infrastructure that brings us together. It will link our institutions to support our cooperation across borders. 
Through all this, it connects everyone in this region as one community. ASEAN is a vibrant, growing, multicultural region. Our diversity is our strength. To better harness this potential, ASEAN connectivity will bridge the country's individual strengths to make us collectively stronger. ASEAN connectivity will help us better work together on our common challenges. Our region needs a significant increase in infrastructure investments to meet our growing needs. 90 million more people will call our cities home by 2030. Productivity will also need to grow. We also need to cooperate to reach our full potential. Together, we form the third biggest workforce in the world and one of the world's biggest consumer markets. There is huge potential in our digital economy. Our economies are uniquely positioned to benefit further from global trade and investment. ASEAN connectivity will be enhanced through five strategic areas. Sustainable infrastructure, increasing investment, improving infrastructure productivity, and building better cities. Digital innovation, supporting adoption of technology, using digital innovations to improve financial access and enhance data sharing and management. Seamless logistics, lowering costs and improving supply chains. Regulatory excellence, providing common frameworks and removing trade barriers. People mobility, enhancing skills and enabling the movement of our most vital resource, the peoples of ASEAN. Through these areas, the Master Plan provides a framework for everyone to benefit and come closer together. The Master Plan for ASEAN Connectivity 2025 – Reaching for a Better Tomorrow by Connecting ASEAN Today And we're back. You're still with us at Ched Region 1 live streaming on Facebook and YouTube as we celebrate ASEAN 2020. Earlier this morning, we were joined by Attorney Lili, Lili Milia, CISO, CESO 4, OIC Deputy Director and Director 3 for International Affairs, Dr. Schultes Didatiti, AUN Executive Director, and Brother Raimundo B. Suplido, FSC President of the La Salle University, Manila. So before we proceed, let us acknowledge our participants from all over the country and all over Asia. We have our viewers from Abra, Sultan Kudarat, Rizal, Quezon City, Tarlac, Quezon Province, Laguna, Bukidnon, Cavite, Manila, Bulacan, Masbate, Tacloban, Batangas, Ormoc City, Pasig, Dinagat Island, Laguna, Tawi-Tawi, Sambuanga, Marinduque, Mesamis Occidental, Pampanga, and Pangasinan. We also have our faculty and staff who are viewing us right now from University Malaya in Malaysia, from Universitas Gada Mada, from uh, Indonesia, University Brunei Darussalam, and the National University of Laos. In the afternoon session, we will have four talks that will highlight the second word in our theme, responsive, which reflects the needs of ASEAN to increase its proactiveness, creativeness, and responsiveness to regional and global opportunities and challenges. Let us not keep you waiting. We now proceed to our first topic, best practices in extension during the COVID-19 pandemic. A research person who will share about this topic, Finnish Electrical and Electronics Engineering from the University of Birmingham, United Kingdom in 1976, and later received an honorary doctorate in engineering from the same university in 2006. He worked for Petronas for 32 years from September 1976 to December 2008 and held some important and key positions. As a professional engineer, he sat on the board of Engineers Malaysia and was chairman of the Engineering Accreditation Council of Malaysia 
from 2007 to 2012. At present, he is the Vice Chancellor of University Malaya in Malaysia. Let us all welcome Dr. Abdul Rahim Hashim. Well, thank you, Jaron, uh, for the uh, introduction, quite an extensive uh, introduction. Uh, let me uh, start off. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to um, all our participants uh, in ASEAN. Um, the uh, topic for, for today, as has, has mentioned earlier, was that uh, this uh, sharing of our best practices uh, at the University of Malaya on uh, an extension during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Yeah? So I've got a few slides and this will go on for about, uh, I guess, 25, 30 minutes and uh, we have a Q&A right after that. Let me uh, first start off by um, just uh, uh, showing you in terms of um, what happened actually in, in Malaysia as far as the um, uh, pandemic is, is concerned with regards to uh, the movement control order. We had um, the government has instituted uh, about four uh, phases as far as the um, uh, MCO is, is, is concerned. The first one was actually from uh, 18 to uh, 31st of March, which is actually um, restricting uh, movement and closure of all non-essential businesses, uh, including education institutions. So we were actually affected during that period of time. That was the first two weeks, and then it was subsequently extended uh, for about um, another, uh, uh, I guess, uh, six weeks, yeah, about six weeks. Uh, that one also uh, the same uh, uh, restrictions. And uh, Further to that, uh, from 4th of May to about 9th of, of June, about five weeks, uh, which is again a conditional MCO. This uh, is a lifting of um, certain activities which was actually allowed. And of course, uh, now we are in the recovery mode, uh, which is from the 10th of June until 31st of August, which actually provides uh, more relaxation on public activities and also it is part and parcel of the government exit uh, policy. So we have uh, those, those four, um, uh, what do you call, phases of uh, movement control order. Yeah. Let me uh, perhaps uh, give you an indication in terms of um, what measures we, did we actually um, took uh, as far as uh, UM is, is concerned. And I'm sure this will actually be uh, almost similar with other uh, institution of higher learning in uh, the various uh, countries, uh, not just in uh, Malaysia, in ASEAN, but also throughout the world. Uh, first and foremost was actually um, the adjustment of our academic uh, calendar year. Yeah, uh, Our mid-semester break, uh, the going into the second semester, was actually extended. And actually, we resume uh, classes back in uh, end of April. Uh, into a full online uh, teaching and, and learning mode. Now, as far as the teaching and learning, um, we um, when it was actually implemented, um, it was um, not our first time as well as we implemented uh, teaching and learning online. Uh, and this is was actually um, something which we have actually done before. I'll, I'll get to back back to that uh, on on this on the second uh, uh, I guess uh, point. But the first uh, point is that. Uh, we have also our uh, postgraduate uh, students who are actually undertaking full-time research programs are uh, actually permitted to, to come on board on campus to finalize uh, their uh, research um, areas which requires uh, intervention. Eh? Like, for example, you have uh, lab uh, work and so on and so forth. You, you're allowed to, to come back uh, on, on campus, but very, very restricted and uh, the, uh, you have to follow the, the certain uh, health protocols that's required. Uh, the second one, which is um, uh, implementation of the online uh, teaching and learning mode. Now, uh, this one, we are actually mandated by the Ministry of Edu Higher Education Malaysia uh, to, to go on uh, online for the whole year, yeah, for until end of this year. Uh, that's that's what the uh, we have been mandated. And uh, actually, we are quite fortunate as far as University of Malaya is, is, is concerned that uh, we have got the, the, the so-called uh, um, student uh, or the uh, a system, which is uh, the learning uh, management system uh, called Spectrum. 
and uh, we are also we are able to also uh, undertake other um, platforms at the same time yeah so it's not just restricted to spectrum but others as well and uh, just to give you a bit of uh, history to this we started as the online learning way back in 2016 but uh, that was an um, introduction and we have the so-called online learning every week uh, sorry every year or a week and uh, last year because of haze we uh, in implemented fully for about two weeks so we are not uh, alien to this particular approach but this time around we did it uh, we had to go online 100 percent yeah um, I guess one of the biggest uh, challenges that we face is actually this so-called point number three, the alternative assessment methods. Because this is, uh, again, it is left to the uh, lecturers themselves to determine what is actually best suited uh, uh, for their students in terms of uh, assess assessment. I mean, you, there's some of them on, uh, which is uh, shown there, online quizzes, or even you can you do it. Uh, short videos and, and and so on and so forth. There's also open book exam and and the like. Um, and the fourth one is actually um, again uh, something which is new to to a lot of uh, lecturers. I'm sure again all over the place is the implementing of the final assessment because this is something which uh, uh, you have to determine whether if you are doing a synchronous or is asynchronous uh, uh, teaching and learning. Then the question is that. What do, do, do we do in terms of uh, the final assessment of the students themselves? Yeah, uh, a lot of cases we do uh, what we call a summative uh, assessment from work that they have done from the semester, the first semester, second semester onwards, and we, we do that. But for postgraduates, uh, especially the, the PhD uh, research students uh, on Viber Vosse, they was actually done online, which actually got no, no, no problem whatsoever. Um, we go to point number five. Now, this is uh, an area perhaps uh, uh, it's not many people will actually be on, many students will be involved in this, but uh, you have students which are unable to, to complete a course, uh, are actually awarded so the so called uh, grade I or incomplete. And uh, for this, we have a special semester at the end of the semester to provide them with special classes to make sure that uh, they can complete those incomplete uh, courses for them to complete the whole programs. Eh? Uh, <clears throat> in terms of uh, submission of research work by postgraduates, again, uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, we're just uh, accepting the uh, digital format on, on PDF. Uh, that's uh, uh, fairly straightforward. Um, the other area that, uh, again, is a challenge for a lot of uh, our lecturers is actually the modification uh, uh, of the course itself and uh, how the teaching actually is being evaluated. Yeah, because uh, at the end of the semester, normally the so-called uh, evaluation uh, survey, which we call CTES, yeah, uh, will allow the students to, to evaluate their uh, lecturers and uh, to reflect, especially online learning as to whether they have uh, benefited from from that particular approach of, of teaching and, and learning. And uh, again, the other challenge, the last one, is actually on industrial training and uh, teaching practice. Because of the uh, movement control order, uh, the, uh, we, don't, we could not have the so-called um, practical training or internship training at uh, the various places. So the issue is that uh, uh, students uh, are not able to, to meet the respective professional body requirements, but we have done um, uh, an arrangement with the professional bodies. They can actually accept uh, certain uh, areas where we can uh, determine that is actually part and parcel of, of their training. So you have to deal that with uh, separate um, professional bodies to make sure that they meet the requirements of, of those particular bodies. Eh? Now, I guess uh, the next uh, uh, item, uh, which is, is also a, a very, very important uh, area, is uh, uh, the preparedness of online teaching and learning. As I mentioned earlier, we have this uh, the on online teaching and learning uh, done in 2016, but not 100% of the uh, uh, lecturers were actually on board. So this is something which um, needs to be addressed. And what we did was that, obviously, um, 
we assess uh, our lecturers and students' readiness through surveys, yeah, trying to uh, get more important is their accessibility, yeah, this, uh, the internet accessibility, and also whether they, are, they have got the right devices, yeah, uh, whether it's laptop, uh, handphones, and so on and so forth, and also um, to get them to determine whether what sort of grading schemes that we are going to be to introduce, yeah? whether it is still a normal grading scheme or is it going to be something that is pass or fail. So this is uh, the survey that was done. And from there, we um, the, made some, some decisions in terms of um, how to proceed with the so-called online teaching and learning, which is the, the, the second pillar there. Uh, and we went on board on full online classes which is, uh, I mentioned earlier, both uh, synchronous and asynchronous classes. Uh, in most cases, it is actually asynchronous because uh, if you are doing synchronous, everybody has to come on board at the same time. And when we have students at uh, the various locations around the country, some have uh, good access, some do not. So the asynchronous uh, classes are actually much, much better. But you still need somehow rather to have one or two synchronous uh, classes so that you can see your, your students directly. Right? So um, the uh, online discussions, presentations, simulations and so forth was actually done uh, also online. And uh, the final exam is very, very important. This is not just for the graduating students, but uh, all the students. What do we do in terms of uh, the um, alternative assessment? Because some, some of these are actually non face to face. But what we did also, at the same time, uh, we are able to, uh, our system is able to do online exams, yeah, for a maximum of 1,000 uh, uh, students. And uh, if uh, the numbers are small, they still could do a face-to-face -face exam, except that uh, you have to make sure that you uh, follow the uh, required uh, health uh, protocol in terms of social distancing, masks, uh, sanitizing and, and, and so on and so forth, yeah. Um, but the, the, the most important, uh, I guess, uh, area which needs to be focused during the MCO is really in terms of uh, communication, yeah, uh, and providing the overall leadership as far as this is concerned, because there's a lot of uncertainties. People were concerned in terms of, yeah, what do we do and how do we go about, about it? And uh, the only communication is all online. So for us, the uh, message is, is, is very important. It has to be, um, I guess, uh, personalized uh, in that manner. And it has to be prompt with the right uh, updates. Especially uh, a lot of messages are coming from the government, yeah, from the uh, authorities, and also from the um, Ministry of uh, Higher Education. Excuse me. So that is... Uh, a very very important uh, area and of course uh, for for us we will make sure that it, it goes through one specific uh, uh, I guess focal point in the university itself in this case our corporate uh, communication office is the focal point for all communications to all our uh, uh, key stakeholders and of course uh, at the same time uh, we get the, uh, uh, the lecturers uh, the academicians to have also chat time because you need to have the so-called question and answers yeah, uh, time. So we leave it to the uh, faculty um, uh, leadership to, to, to conduct that. And um, of course, uh, on uh, we use also social media to provide the latest update tips and also resources on online learning, which is part and parcel of uh, enhancing the um, online teaching and, and learning. And uh, we have an additional uh, apps, which is called UM uh, Touch, uh, which provides um, additional uh, channel of communication for uh, uh, students, especially and staff during the, the crisis itself. Yeah. Now, the, the second area in terms of uh, which is actually uh, very, very important is, again, uh, the support for academic staff, because what we have is that we have a full range of uh, demographics as far as staff is concerned, from the younger ones to the uh, more matured staff. And the question is that, are they skilled enough as far as uh, training for, for online uh, teaching? And this is, I think, a very, very important 
area where we have got a unit uh, which is uh, is called ADAC, yeah? Academic Development uh, and I think uh, uh, support, yeah. Uh, and what we have also done is that uh, to make sure that uh, we have also uh, invested in uh, the um, infrastructure, the, the ICT infrastructure, uh, so that the um, support online for teaching and learning goes on without disruption. So it's, it's, just, it's just very, very crucial because everybody is uh, relying on that uh, particular channel of uh, communication. And of course, um, with all this, uh, somehow or other, we need to, to relax some of the uh, requirements as far as processes are concerned, so that we are a bit more agile, but more adaptive as we go on uh, to try and make sure that uh, we are able to subscribe to the technology in support of the uh, online uh, learning. Um, the fourth one is, um, I guess, the uh, issue of uh, flexibility, which is um, uh, providing the um, academic staff to conduct their teaching. It doesn't matter where or how the uh, academic staff conduct, but uh, they are given that, that flexibility. And also, uh, at that point in time, they were not actually allowed to, to come on campus anyway. Uh, the fifth was actually to, to provide um, assistance, uh, especially, especially with regards to, um, I mentioned accessibility and also the hardware. So um, what we have done is that uh, we have got a system of, uh, we call it BYOD, by your own device, uh, where we provide certain uh, financial assistance that they can actually purchase, uh, especially the, uh, the the hardware, make sure that they are able to, to, to conduct the, uh, the the teaching. And then lastly, it's, uh, it's about uh, uh, providing the guidelines, yeah? because uh, a lot of time you, you can communicate this uh, verbally and so on and so forth, but somehow or other you still need to have it in writing, so that becomes a manual where everybody can refer to if they have got any uh, questions, especially the frequently asked questions. And these are actually provided as far as uh, on, on, online is, uh, teaching and learning is, is, is concerned. Uh, and uh, the, the third one, of course, very, very important is this, this so-called uh, for the students themselves. Yeah? How do we actually support students for this? And we, uh, we have a policy, it's an inclusive policy where Nobody is uh, left behind or no students are, are left behind uh, and to sure that uh, the connectivity as well as the hardware is, is, is available. So um, what we have done, we have to make uh, some special arrangement with uh, a telco yeah, to provide that uh, connectivity. And this uh, telco is able to reach um, almost, I think, 95% uh, of where our students are, are, are located. Um, and at the same time, uh, what we did was that uh, we have a, a, a campaign, which is an in-house campaign, to raise uh, funds to assist, uh, I guess, students who are actually uh, affected by the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, and uh, the area that, that perhaps uh, we had to address also, there are students who are actually uh, still on campus, which could not go back because of the MCO. And... Um, what we did that they have to stay in residential colleges and going forward uh, when uh, the, the students can come on board uh, we have this so-called pay when you stay that means uh, you don't have to pay for the whole uh, semester uh, when you stay here for a week to finish your work and so on and so forth you only pay for that particular duration that you are staying there and of course during uh, the pandemic there's a lot of issues of um, mental health yeah, because uh, people are cooped up uh, in their rooms for, for long periods of time and there are issues as far as uh, mental health are concerned and we provide um, the so-called um, support, yeah? counselling support. Uh, the fourth and uh, perhaps uh, second last uh, area is in terms of contribution to the uh, community. Now, we uh, part and parcel of... Uh, our uh, university is that uh, we are a full comprehensive university with uh, the Faculty of Medicine. We even have uh, the um, uh, teaching hospital at the same time. And we have got a, a center which is called uh, TDRAG. Eh? This stands for Tropical Infectious Disease uh, Research and Education Center. Uh, and this particular center 
is uh, what we term in Malaysia has the uh, high COE. It's a center of excellence recognized by the uh, Ministry of Higher Education, which is uh, looks after uh, research in uh, tropical infectious diseases. And they actually, together with the Faculty of Medicine, has uh, uh, played a, a big role in terms of the uh, diagnostics, yeah, in terms of screening and testing of uh, COVID-19 uh, potential. Uh, and we also have a uh, data repository, which is, uh, we are quite fortunate that being a, a COVID uh, hospital, we, we can actually get uh, uh, quite a bit of, of data. And uh, from there, we can actually publish uh, works with regards to uh, COVID-19 areas. Yeah, And uh, we have got also the... Uh, COVID-19 and a poor sequencing. Again, this is done by the, the, the two groups. Yeah, uh, Of course, uh, hand sanitizers uh, because of uh, MCO. So, uh, the, the, so we came up with our own uh, uh, hand sanitizers. Yeah, This is uh, coming from the Center of Natural Products Research and Drug Discovery, SENA. Uh, and, and lastly, our Faculty of uh, Computer Science and Information Technology uh, has uh, come up with uh, this so-called remote electronic medical services, which can actually monitor uh, COVID-19 uh, patients or even uh, uh, what we call the frontliners who are actually um, um, affected by this uh, virus, uh, being monitored remotely, and uh, that will actually lessen the, the burden of uh, monitoring from the hospitals themselves. Eh? Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, the, the fifth area is, of course, uh, we are still uh, doing quite a bit of contribution to the community and the country. I mentioned that uh, as far as the University of Malaya Medical Center is one of the 70 hospitals to provide COVID-19 screening throughout the country. And we are one of the hospitals also to cater for uh, COVID-19 patients. Yeah, in fact, we have to do um, uh, an isolation ward uh, and, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's, it's a big uh, experience as far as we are, we are concerned, but we are quite uh, pleased that we are able to, to contribute to society in that manner. Um, uh, of course, hospital preparedness is the area which we have to look at. And we have a, a capacity of, of uh, handling 250 uh, patients yeah, at any one time. But our uh, numbers are actually quite small because if you look from, from the country perspective, uh, so far in terms of uh, people affected in Malaysia, it's, it's quite low. So in, in a way, uh, we are ready for it. We, but in, the fortunate thing is that we don't have uh, patients now as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Um, of course, uh, we have the swap centers and also providing uh, and receiving samples from Ministry of uh, Health. For, for lab tests, and we are also doing research, yeah, which is uh, through TDRAC just now for, uh, uh, I guess, helping research in the, trying to establish the, uh, the uh, appropriate vaccine for this particular virus. And uh, again, uh, uh, we have a, a, a checking tool trying to um, determine uh, how to try and minimize infection amongst uh, frontline health workers especially. So that is the University of Malaya Medical Center's uh, contribution to the, uh, to the community. And uh, I guess uh, lastly, um, what uh, I would like to, to share, last, last two uh, slides, is that in terms of uh, way forward for, for partnership, especially with uh, our ASEAN uh, partners, is that uh, we would like to, to, to share online courses. Yeah, uh, These are courses which perhaps um, other universities can, can offer, which we could not. And this is where we can then uh, use those, those courses to further uh, enhance uh, our program offering, uh, vice versa. Uh, and this is something which uh, uh, is, is open for, for, for discussion. And the other one is that uh, which has been... Um, put forward by uh, another group, for, uh, which is uh, the uh, Asia-Pacific Research Universities group about virtual mobility. Yeah? Um, yeah, you don't have to physically be there, but uh, we do it uh, online. And this is something which uh, 
is being um, not even being designed, but just moving ahead in, in, uh, as far as uh, mobility is, is concerned. Um, and lastly, um, a way of partnership is about micro credentialing because a lot of uh, areas, if you, if you think forward, there's a lot of jobs uh, which are perhaps uh, post uh, pandemic is going to disappear, some jobs is going to be enhanced, and so on and so forth. So the question is how do we upskill and reskill uh, not just uh, our people within on campus, but I think more so with the industry. And this is uh, how we can actually provide uh, value. And we would like uh, to, to, to partner with um, our university partners to how to make sure that this actually can be shared across uh, ASEAN itself. And uh, finally, um, uh, <clears throat> at the end of the day, in terms of uh, providing the so-called um, how to, to blend the so-called online learning and education of uh, human values and interaction on campus, I think we have to strike a, a balance here. We can't go totally um, uh, online because there are areas which uh, needs to be developed, especially values and attributes. You can't do it uh, effectively um, online. So we have to do it uh, and also the so-called interaction, yeah, how people develop, because we are all uh, uh, social um, groups of people. We need to have that so-called interpersonal and, and um, soft skills yeah, to be developed, leadership skills to be developed, as well as the character building. Because uh, a lot of times, students uh, normally will associate themselves with the faculty and also where their residential colleges are. So that's an area which we say, uh, although we are going online until end of this year, but perhaps next year we need to blend it with face-to-face. Uh, -face. And that uh, is some of the, the, the challenges that we're going to face, especially for, for big groups of uh, cohort of a specific program. Yeah? It's a program of 200 uh, students. Now, how do you do face-to-face? -face? You have to break it them up and, 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 and so on and so forth. So that's a, a challenge that, that we face. So all in all, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, what uh, University of Malaya has, has, has done over the last, um, I guess, from, since March, yeah, uh, to address the uh, issue of uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we are still a lot of areas that we need to, uh, to improve on. Uh, so it's, it's a learning process. Uh, and um, we wish also to, to learn from um, our partners in ASEAN as to what uh, they have done, which perhaps you can constitute as, as, as good practices. Yeah? So um, uh, with that, uh, uh, I'll come to the end of the presentation and I welcome uh, questions uh, from uh, viewers. Yeah? So thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Abdul, for that short but substantial talk. Answer portion. So our viewers are encouraged to send their questions now using our comment section or our chat box on YouTube. I think what's very interesting in the talk of uh, Dr. Abdul is the fact that he gave us is this um, holistic leadership approach whereby you have considered all factors that are needed comprehensive learning continuity plan um to enumerate we have effective communication support for academic staff support for students which is very re relevant to the talk of uh, Brother Raymond this morning when he emphasized wellness of our students. Mm. Beauty and the country. And you also emphasize one uh, important, uh, I think, uh, one important thing that we should also consider this our students is to provide them with holistic and vibrant education. Thank you very much. And I think we now have a question. So the first question is, 
what are the challenges for online teaching and conducting research during for online teaching yeah okay if I, if I can answer that uh, as i mentioned earlier um for for the students the the, the main uh, challenge would be in terms of uh, access yeah access to the um uh, having access to internet uh, line yeah uh, the, the, of course the second one is whether do they have um, the right tools yeah, yeah? especially uh, laptops or desktops or even uh, smartphones for that for that matter uh, because they are all all over the country they are, they've gone back to their their homes that, that's the uh, the two main challenges the question is how do we then provide them with the um, with the uh, uh, i guess how to mitigate those yeah well, one of the mitigation i mentioned we work with telcos to provide accessibility but at the same time is that to make sure that the lectures that are provided can go from a very sophisticated learning management system which we have uh, lms and to the to the lowest uh, uh, i guess uh, technology which is through through whatsapp yeah through emails and through the uh, the handphone so so you have to have that range so that you provide uh, access um we also uh, provide access in terms of uh, certain um, we work the telcos to provide um, for, for a fee uh, they can provide until about 20 gigs uh, of, uh, of, of of bandwidth uh, as, as far as they're concerned. I think the other challenge is, of course, for the lecturers yeah, to make sure that uh, they can actually deliver the, the programs themselves, make the programs interesting. Um, but we, what we have found out is that uh, the uh, students actually um, learn better because they are, um, they, they are learning on, on their own time. And at the same time, uh, what they do is that they can do a bit more reflection, yeah, because it's asynchronous type of uh, teaching. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, the attendance is actually much higher as compared to face-to-face. -face. So these are some of the learning. But of course, the lecturers, we have to provide them with the support in terms of um, what options do they have as far as uh, the, the teaching is concerned, yeah, to make sure that the uh, it is not just showing videos, uh, YouTube videos, not just uh, uh, recording their own uh, voices and let uh, the... Uh, so it is something which is a challenge depending on what program or what course you are teaching. Uh, we leave it to the uh, um, uh, lecturers to do that. But we, when we have that feedback, then uh, we know in terms of whether the uh, teaching is effective or the learning is effective. Eh? So that's, I guess, the... Uh, the, 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 the main challenges facing the, those, those two groups, the key stakeholders uh, as far as uh, teaching online is, is, is concerned. The same problem here in the Philippines when it comes to internet access and choosing the right tools for our teachers and for our students. Mm -hmm. But what is so... Um, astounding actually that I saw a while ago as one of your support for students is fundraising. Hmm. And we have another question. As you mentioned that not all lecturers or teachers could get on board the op online platform. What was the policy or action Yeah, um, I, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, the uh, the support for academic staff is actually uh, very, very, very important. One is actually um, uh, providing continuous uh, training and, and reskilling online. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, making sure that they understand uh, what options are available for them. Uh, that's continuous, and we have a, a, a chat box for them as well if they are uncertain and so on and so forth. So that support is almost, uh, I wouldn't say 24 seven, but it is uh, for the whole duration during that point, there's always someone who will actually uh, address uh, some of the issues that was raised. Uh, um, of course, uh, making sure that uh, the, uh, the ICT uh, infrastructure on campus is uh, again available 100%, yeah, because 
any glitches as far as uh, that is concerned will affect uh, our delivery. Yeah. So the um, ICT group is, is always uh, 24. That one is 24 seven, making sure that's that's available. Uh, and also we relax some of these so-called bureaucratic um, uh, constraints eh, that perhaps prevent people from uh, subscribing to technology and, and because uh, in certain areas they require uh, more um, subscribers to turn it in for example yeah we, we increase that subscribers uh, we allow uh, purchases to, to, to be done uh, on a, a urgent basis uh, and also in terms of uh, flexibility for the uh, academic staff to conduct their teaching we provide that uh, and also at the same time uh, they are being provided uh, by giving them, uh, I guess, uh, special uh, funding yeah, so that they can buy uh, their own devices. You'd be surprised that some uh, lecturers do not have hardware, which is, uh, I'm, I'm surprised, but that's, that's what happened. And of course, lastly, I mentioned that we need to have um, the so-called guidelines. Yeah? The guidelines are very, very important because uh, these are further enhanced through uh, the so-called uh, frequently asked questions, yeah, is, is, uh, is continually enhanced to make sure that the guidelines is actually comprehensive, yeah. So if you have any issues and so on and so forth, you refer to the guidelines. If you have questions about the guidelines, you refer back to the uh, people at uh, the uh, the center to, to address those those support for academic staff. So, to, so th those are some of the interventions that we did to make sure that uh, our staff. Uh, uh, equip, yeah, equip, and be ready to address these uh, so-called online uh, teaching and learning issues. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdul, for that uh, comprehensive answer. And now, since you this via email, let me read the text: Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Dr. Abdul Rahim Hashim, Vice Chancellor, University is as a resource speaker during the webinar on cohesive and responsive ASEAN 2020. The insights he shared are truly significant in creating resilient higher education institutions in Region 1 and in Southeast Asia, ready to embrace a new normal in education. Amid the pressing issues There's individuality to a more peaceful, stable, and prosperous ASEAN. Given this 12th day of August 2020, the Commission on Higher Education Regional Office signed Rogelio T. Galera, PhD, OIC Director for. Let's uh, to our uh, audience. Let's give a virtual clap or applause to our. <laughs> Thank okay, you, thank you Gerald. Appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to, to share with you. Thank you. Before you go, sir, do you have any words to say? Any no. message? Uh, well, I, I guess uh, there, are, there are opportunities during this... Uh, period uh, of further collaboration with, with our partners in ASEAN. As I mentioned, there are, there are a few that I mentioned earlier, yeah, in terms of uh, sharing some, some, some online courses uh, that some are offering. The micro-credentialing is, is actually another one. And also the virtual mobility, yeah, which is, I think we should take them up uh, to provide so that it's just not uh, constraining uh, the, the, the work that we, we are doing within our own uh, institutions, but also at the same time uh, be able out of this uh, so-called pandemic, something new that crops up, which actually will provide uh, added value to, to all members of, of the um, AUN community. So again, thank you very much for the opportunity given. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll try and see whether we can uh, contribute further to the AUN objectives. Thank you, Jaro. You're welcome, Dr. Abdul, and thank you very much, too.
from graduated from Tokyo Institute of Technology Japan in 1990 and obtained his doctorate in the same university in 1993. He served as a dean in 2012-2016 and in 2016 was re-elected as a dean. He is a professor of energy science in the field of chemical engineering system optimization. Now he serves as director of Universitas Gadamada in Indonesia to share with Sir. Okay. Salam. Okay, that is time for me. Okay, thank you very much, uh, moderator, uh, for uh, time for me. Uh, Excellencies, uh, IUC Director, uh, IUC Deputy, uh, Dr. Koltis, uh, AUN uh, Executive Director, uh, all of my colleagues, AUN uh, Board of Trustee, and uh, also all of the uh, participants uh, of this uh, webinar. Uh, again, thank you very much for uh, <coughs> time for me. Uh, to present uh, the policy uh, on research and best practice uh, in innovation uh, translation uh, during uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And uh, in this presentation, I would like to focus uh, my talk uh, in the research policy and research contribution uh, in overcome uh, COVID-19 pandemic and also uh, economic recovery uh, due to uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, I want just to introduce Universitas Gajah Mada uh, that Universitas Gajah Mada uh, UGM uh, established in 19 December uh, 1949 and uh, UGM was established as a symbol of the existence of the Republic Indonesia uh, after our uh, independence. Uh, and uh, Universitas Gajah Mada, uh, next slide, is a comprehensive uh, university. Uh, we have uh, 18 faculties and two schools, a school of uh, vocational and a graduate school. Uh, so uh, we have uh, advantage with this uh, comprehensive uh, field uh, we have in uh, Universitas Gajah Mada. <laughs> then the next slide uh, is uh, when we talk uh, about the research, uh, the policy uh, management, uh, and how we can contribute uh, to the uh, pandemic of uh, COVID-19, uh, that the research and innovation at UGM is oriented uh, on the value added creation to solve various societal uh, problem. And also the outcome have the urgency to be adapted and disseminated uh, immediately or diffusion and in line with the national strategic priorities uh, with academic, industrial and community uh, fish uh, approach. Then uh, the next slide is uh, what is the regulation and policy uh, support uh, to downstreaming of the uh, research research. Uh, the regulation and policy support uh, are the acceleration of permit and standardized uh, process from the government institution and standardization uh, body and uh, advanced research funding uh, to support, to scale up towards uh, industry skill and acceleration of procurement process for the government group. Uh, this regulation and uh, policy, policy from the uh, government uh, is <coughs> used uh, to foster uh, the downstreaming of uh, research in uh, pandemic uh, COVID uh, pandemic uh, recently. And uh, we have 
uh, full areas uh, in this uh, slide or sector uh, UTM emphasize uh, the research uh, also innovation uh, through uh, community uh, services so uh, some faculties and also research center uh, in UGM a uh, group uh, in these four main areas uh, we uh, strengthen uh, the research uh, in this uh, condition uh, those are social economic resilience sector uh, some group of uh, uh, faculty and also a group uh, of uh, faculty and also uh, the uh, research center uh, here uh, and the second is the idea or sector of uh, food security uh, and uh, small and medium uh, enterprises or small and medium uh, industry uh, resilient uh, sector uh, because SME uh, is uh, suffering now uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic and also uh, village empowerment uh, sector through village uh, master plan so uh, this four sector uh, we uh, now uh, make the uh, deep research uh, to overcome and uh, also uh, to recovery the economic uh, sector uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, pandemic and in the next slide we will show you uh, about the research uh, management and partnership uh, in UGM uh, but we will focus uh, in the case of uh, medical uh, devices uh, so uh, we <coughs> group uh, the, the research uh, in the university and in the Ipan uh, Technology Research Center and then the last uh, is uh, in the teaching in the industry for the technology technology uh, written is level one until three uh, we do in uh, our laboratory uh, we have uh, some laboratories in the university and we make uh, synergize about the uh, laboratory uh, we call it as a corporate laboratory uh, for doing research in the TRL 1 until TRL 3. Then for the TRL 4 until TRL 6, uh, we do it in the Advanced uh, Technology Research Center. Uh, this uh, should be a collaboration uh, between the government, uh, university, and uh, industry. And in the final stage for the production of the uh, research result for uh, downstreaming and make commercialization of the research result, uh, we do it in the uh, teaching uh, industry. And uh, the next uh, slide uh, shows uh, the uh, process of... Uh, <coughs> next slide, please. Yes. Yes, uh, this is uh, the process of uh, from research results uh, until we make the prototype uh, and make the trial uh, until come to the uh, incubation uh, before uh, the <coughs> commercialization. Uh, so uh, this is uh, for the cure of medical devices from the research results. Uh, until the preparation of the prototype, then formulation uh, and make the uh, material of the uh, medical uh, application uh, and also uh, pharmacy uh, preparation uh, trial. And if the preclinic trial be failed, uh, then we back to the prototype uh, and the preclinical trial success, uh, we go to the clinical trial and finally uh, come to the uh, incubation uh, to make a measure uh, of the result uh, before the uh, commercialization and uh, in the next slide uh, we will uh, show you uh, about the uh, research uh, management in uh, UGM uh, we have uh, some unit or office or entity uh, to manage uh, our research 
uh, of course uh, research group uh, they work in the uh, laboratory and then we have also a liaison office uh, to manage the consultation uh, research collaboration and making the contract and uh, also uh, we have TTO and TLO technology transfer office and technology licensing office uh, for manage uh, the intellectual property rights uh, valuation uh, of the research uh, license or other downstream uh, model and uh, we have also incubators uh, in Universitas Gajah Mada uh, this is to make uh, the maturation of the uh, research research uh, before uh, we make the commercialization with uh, our uh, partner uh, then uh, in the next uh, slide yeah this slide is uh, the <coughs> classification of uh, our uh, partnership uh, of course uh, that uh, the partnership between the university uh, and in and the industries uh, we have uh, three uh, condition or three level uh, taiwan is that the university become uh, the research center uh, of the uh, industry and the uh, tier two is the university collaborate with the industry and entrepreneur uh, to provide uh, research data, research trial, testing, and so on. And uh, in the tier three, university help uh, and assist the micro, small, and uh, medium uh, size enterprises. Uh, so uh, the UGM now uh, is. Uh, in the uh, tier one because uh, some uh, industries also uh, have the uh, collaboration with uh, EGM and making uh, some uh, product uh, together. And uh, UGM uh, also developed a UGM uh, science uh, technopa and in the UGM science uh, technopa uh, we have uh, develop uh, some uh, product here uh, to support uh, the flow of uh, innovation and accordance with the university uh, priority uh, areas. So in the science techno park, uh, we have uh, many, uh, many uh, product which uh, be, <coughs> with be research in, in this uh, UGM. Uh, science uh, technopa and from this uh, science technopa uh, will uh, be a uh, lot of uh, UGM uh, products yeah. and uh, for the long term uh, innovation uh, target uh, the research to find cure uh, and uh, vaccine uh, for a viral infectious uh, disease and also we form uh, the formula of human resource uh, education for a future ready uh, to face technological development uh, such as biosecurity, biosafety, and bio uh, contamin, uh, including one head uh, and bio uh, terrorism. And uh, for the research uh, product, uh, UGM uh, have a lot of uh, uh, research product uh, contribute uh, not only to the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, uh, but also for some uh, disease or uh, also <coughs> uh, uh, some catastrophic uh, diseases. Uh, for example, uh, here uh, we develop uh, inasan uh, to help uh, hydrocephalic uh, children. Uh, so uh, the children. <coughs> uh, patient uh, of hydrocephalus uh, can be helped with uh, this uh, inasan and also uh, we developing now uh, inasten uh, for uh, the cardiac disease and also uh, heart uh, disease uh, so in uh, inasten now is the uh, final stage of uh, uh, testing uh, in the hospital and uh, the next uh, product is uh, gamacha uh, for example uh, gamacha is bone graft uh, 
uh, of the uh, Indonesia meat uh, for the implant in uh, dental uh, operation and uh, also uh, we have uh, nasofaring uh, cancer detection uh, so that with the uh, rapid detection uh, we can detect the uh, nasofaring uh, cancer uh, rapidly and uh, next is the uh, COVID-19 uh, related uh, innovation uh, has been done by uh, UGM uh, first product is the ventilator uh, ventilator we call it as a uh, ventindo is the uh, ventilator for ICU uh, and also a ventilator ventilator or portable ventilator with back part mask that can be used as an uh, invasive and non-invasive uh, uh, ventilator. And the second product uh, for the uh, COVID-19 is uh, Genus uh, FID, uh, electrical uh, nose uh, that can be used to detect the positive or negative COVID-19 uh, patient. Uh, without uh, using a uh, reagent uh, but uh, only measure uh, the uh, volatile organic matter uh, from the birth uh, of the uh, patient uh, now uh, this uh, device is uh, also uh, in the uh, final stage of uh, the uh, testing <coughs> in the hospitals and uh, the third product uh, is uh, rapid test uh, for uh, detect uh, the positive or uh, negative uh, COVID-19 uh, patient. Uh, this product uh, is the result of the partnership uh, between UGM and our partner. And this product already uh, <coughs> ready. Uh, in the market and we can use uh, this product uh, within 10 uh, until 15 minutes uh, to know uh, the patient is uh, negative or positive uh, COVID-19 and uh, the fourth uh, product is thermal heat scanner so we develop uh, how uh, we can uh, measure the temperature of the body uh, of the person or people uh, not using thermometer uh, but uh, using a system uh, <coughs> which uh, we can uh, rapidly know uh, the uh, temperature of the uh, body uh, of uh, the people uh, and uh, with the distance about two meter uh, between this uh, apparatus and uh, the people uh, this is uh, the <coughs> thermal kit uh, scanner uh, developed by our uh, researcher. And the five uh, <coughs> product is the Fiona product. Uh, Fiona is uh, M, 19 uh, five mask, a sterilizer, uh, the result of the collaboration between the Faculty of Engineering and Faculty of Medicine, Public Health and Nursing uh, of Universitas Gajah Mada. Uh, it has been uh, proven as effective tool in uh, sterilizing mass. Uh, so uh, we can use uh, this product uh, to uh, filter uh, the COVID-19 uh, enter to our uh, body. And uh, the next product is COVID-19 uh, accessories uh, we can uh, produce facial, uh, facial, uh, mask uh, and uh, some of uh, the accessories using 3D uh, printing uh, of course a facial uh, and uh, some accessories uh, for the uh, prevention of uh, COVID-19 uh, and uh, we go to the seventh uh, product is the Center for Medical Innovation and Devices, uh, CIMED, uh, 
uh, we have a such kind of uh, uh, laboratory uh, <coughs> to produce uh, some of the uh, apparatus, vaccine, uh, uh, coveral, vaccine uh, and uh, coveral uh, integration, uh, hood cover uh, for dentists and uh, and and others. Uh, so this workshop uh, can uh, produce uh, some uh, apparatus for uh, prevention of the uh, COVID-19. Uh, and uh, also uh, we have smart food uh, swap or smart food or chamber or cabinet uh, which we uh, can use uh, to take uh, the sample without interaction or direct interaction uh, between the patient uh, and the medical doctor or between uh, the employer employer and the uh, uh, patient uh, so uh, this chamber can prevent uh, direct uh, interaction uh, between uh, the medical doctor uh, and the uh, COVID uh, patient uh, in taking uh, the swab uh, sample. And the next product is uh, aerosol suction. Uh, so for the uh, hospital uh, in the <coughs> aerosol suction uh, uh, device devices uh, caused by dental uh, procedure and aerosol is uh, highly potential for the transmission uh, or infection of the COVID-19. Uh, also for the hepatitis B, uh, HIV, uh, AIDS, and tuberculosis. Uh, so with this device, we suck uh, <coughs> the droplet, uh, so it is uh, proven, uh, the aerosol uh, in the room. And uh, the next product is uh, spiridin piece. Uh, immunostimulant uh, product uh, which uh, we have researched uh, this product and suggested uh, can be used to prevent uh, the uh, COVID-19 and we take uh, this uh, material uh, from the citrus reticular uh, and uh, the next product uh, is uh, VCO. Uh, we uh, try uh, to make testing of the VCO uh, to prevent uh, the uh, COVID-19. And uh, VCO is uh, already widely uh, used uh, in <coughs> uh, the community and uh, the active uh, compound uh, contained in the uh, preclinical test result of VCO has the activity uh, as an antiviral and immunomodulator. Uh, so therefore, uh, it has the potential to help cure a COVID-19 uh, patient. And uh, the next is the COVID-19 uh, box uh, ID. Uh, we develop the big data uh, management uh, to uh, analyze. Uh, the technology for collecting data related to COVID-19 from uh, official uh, source. Uh, for example, Indonesia Ministry of Health uh, Global Data, uh, Supporting Data, and other uh, credible source. And we can use uh, this data uh, to make the prediction uh, of the uh, COVID-19 spread uh, in the uh, society. And uh, the next is the uh, uh, COVID-19 related uh, research. Uh, uh, I already explained this uh, chamber or cabinet uh, for the uh, taking the uh, swab uh, sample from the uh, COVID-19 uh, patient. And also uh, our staff, our research uh, make uh, the modeling of uh, COVID-19 uh, for the COVID-19 spread model uh, using uh, agent-based uh, model. Uh, also, uh, Indonesian characterization uh, epidemiologic uh, numerical uh, model 
and more healing anti covid 19 molecule uh, tracing uh, and uh, other uh, we also develop uh, some uh, model uh, to trace uh, the <coughs> uh, covid uh, uh, 19 and also in the social <coughs> of humanities uh, research uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, product of the uh, research uh, in the social humanities uh, area of field and the communication on pandemic COVID-19 risk, uh, conversion of uh, COVID-19 management, uh, and uh, other uh, simulation, and also uh, about uh, the uh, social uh, research. And uh, also, uh, we uh, make uh, some booklet or pamphlet or brochure of uh, COVID-19 uh, literacy for the uh, society. We distrib distribute uh, this pamphlet to the uh, community, to the society, uh, to educate and to the society about the uh, COVID-19. Uh, and uh, also uh, we have a leaflet or booklet <coughs> yeah, of uh, COVID-19 uh, literacy uh, for the society in uh, many uh, languages, uh, Indonesia, uh, Japanese, and also other uh, local uh, languages, uh, because Indonesia is similar, uh, I think, with the Philippines yeah, and other ASEAN uh, countries that uh, we have a lot of uh, local languages. And uh, also some uh, other uh, results to support uh, the <coughs> Uh, recovery of the uh, economic uh, and to prevent uh, the spread of the uh, COVID-19. Uh, and uh, please continue. Uh, <coughs> those uh, our uh, research result and our contribution uh, to the COVID-19 pandemic. And now we focus uh, on the uh, recovery of the uh, economic and our government is uh, also uh, have a strong uh, program how uh, we overcome uh, the pandemic and soon uh, recovery uh, our uh, economy uh, thank you very much for your attention so that's professor <laughs> Thank you much, sir. You were amazed by the innovations you've made through your research program. That only proves that your school has a strong research culture, not just a strong research culture, but also relevant as well. So uh, we wish you that you... Creativity, tenacity, and passion in research, you tackle or you're trying to solve big challenges such as hydrocephalus and COVID products. There were a lot of inventions that we saw earlier, which I think would uh, interest our viewers. So, probably you can ask some questions related to those because. We need, I think we need them here in the Philippines. So uh, it's okay. great to ask uh, Dr. Or do you want to ask for his uh, slide presentation? <laughs> but he will not give that to you unless you have some questions. So we have one from... Marife Torres, so it's a compliment. So she mentioned their research has impact on society. So, sir, that's one good compliment from our viewer. Another one is congratulations. Thank you for sharing your research initiatives. Thank you. Thank you very much. I do it. Uh, with the presentation and uh, as I mentioned earlier, sir, we were actually amazed by the products you've made through research. 
inspired to somehow level up also when it comes to research. So there are no questions anymore. Let okay, us thank you. Let us now award the E certificate to our second speaker in the second session. We have Professor a resource speaker during the webinar on cohesive and responsive ASEAN 2020. The insights that he shared are truly significant in creating resilient higher Asia, ready to embrace the new normal in education. Amid the pressing issues of our time, we have learned to celebrate our ASEAN identity and its timeless values of cooperation and respect for each other's individuality to a more peaceful, stable, and prosperous ASEAN. Signed, Rogelio Tigalera, PhD, OIC Director for. Again, virtual applause for our second speaker this afternoon, Professor Panut. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, moderator. Sir, any thank you. To our viewers, you, you viewers in the Philippines and in other countries, sir, do you have any message? Okay. For yes. Uh, we have uh, to collaborate uh, in all field and strengthen uh, our partnership uh, and please don't waste this pandemic. Uh, this pandemic uh, should unify us. Yeah, uh, The pandemic uh, should strengthen our uh, collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And now, before we proceed to our third speaker, we'll have a short intermission. So let us listen and watch this video press.
different. We're from all around the world. We share the same sun. We share. Oh. We are one, but we are different. We're from all around the world. We share the same sun. We share the same oceans. We are every boy and girl. That song that you have listened to is entitled We Are Unity and it's a tribute from the Asian Youths tribute for our frontliners. Fourth uh, presenter, we will be sending you the link to our evaluation, evaluation form and then after that we'll be giving you your e-certificate. speaker. Our next uh, resource speaker is a clinical academic in the field of reproductive medicine and biology. She graduated from the University of Glasgow with a medical degree in 1993 and then trained in the field of obstetrics and gynecology. In 2016, under her leadership, new initiatives have included the setting up of the Center for Lifelong Learning, which offers programs employing flexible learning in terms of pay. So that UVD to its debut entry into the QS World University Rankings in 2017 and Times Higher Education World University Rankings in 2019. Let us welcome the UBD 7th Vice Chancellor and the first female to head the university. During the COVID 19 pandemic. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, and ma'am, your PowerPoint uh, presentation. Yeah, thank you. So we'll set up our presentation from here. Uh, my name is Anita Aziz. I'm the Vice Chancellor of University Brunei Darussalam. I'd like to first of all thank um, CHED and ASEAN University Network for this wonderful presentation uh, in invitation to present this afternoon. Uh, we're doing it different this time via online. Um, it was really good to see colleagues who are with us in ASEAN University Network in these presentations as well. Um, but I'm always delighted to be speaking on a ASEAN platform. Um, I am delighted to be asked to speak on the best practices in instruction during COVID-19 pandemic. Um, okay, we, as you know, uh, within ASEAN, we, Brunei is a very small country and we are just north to, the, at the north tip of Borneo and we have a population of only 450,000, and that's including the expatriates. 70% um, of Brunei is covered by pristine rainforest, and um, we're an oil and gas country, but the country's diversifying um, its economy. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, next slide, please. I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, University of Brunei Jerusalem, we are the 
premier university in Brunei, and we're always aligning um, to the Brunei vision and the higher education landscape as well. Um, so Brunei Vision 2035 is um, there are three broad, broad themes. One is to be is to have highly skilled and educated people. Number two is for a dynamic economy, and the third theme is to ensure that this high quality of life. Um, the other thing that the university is always aligning to is the higher education landscape. Um, so as we know, there are no more jobs for life. People change jobs. Um, at the same time, um, jobs that are present now were not even present three years ago. Um, so there's a move to more skills-based rather than qualification-based, um, which is required now in the higher education landscape. And now everyone as well talks about fourth industrial revolution. Um, so digitalization comes into the picture more and more. And we know that every two years, the, t the technology doubles. Um, and again, with people aging, um, our skills is more and more important and lifelong learning um, is very important as well that comes into play. Next. Uh, just the, some quick facts about University Brunei Jerusalem, or in short, UBD. Uh, we're a very young university compared to most universities in the region. We're about 30, we're about 35 years old. Um, one faculty uh, but at the moment we have nine faculties eight research institutes and two support centers so over the last 35 years UBD has progressed and now we are in the top amongst the top one percent of universities in the world uh, next um, sorry next Next that, slide, please. I think that came from your side. What about contour sinica? Sorry, this is not the next slide. So the university, uh, we're always aligning to, we're always aligning ourselves. And way back a few years ago, uh, we wanted to be always ahead when it comes to um, education. Um, so I'd like to quote this. There's a quotation by Samuel Hayes from Harvard Business School. Um, if you are lost, sorry, can you go back to the previous slides, please? Um, I think we've just jumped two slides ahead. Can I control Um If you are lost on a highway, what would be most useful would be a road map. However, if you get lost in a swamp where the topography is constantly changing, a map is of little help. What you need is a compass to point you in the general direction to be taken and allow you to use your own ingenuity in overcoming various difficulties. Um, so what we're saying is traditionally, uh, we have been imparting knowledge to our students. We have been the, we ha professors have been the resource person um, but now what we'd like to do is to be more student-centric where we are um, giving the students compass so that they can maneuver um, their own education. Uh, next one, please. Next, please. Next, please. So... Um, sorry, can we just, we'll just deal with this screen. The next one before this. The next one before this, please. Uh, 
Um, so in whole studies within the core and 45% doing other modules in other faculties or doing interdisciplinary modules. Um, so there was more experiential learning uh, and what we did was in the fourth year, in the four year programs, in the third year, the students had to leave the university, which is a compulsory year out. And we call this as a discovery year. And the intention of this discovery year was to push students outside their comfort zone. Um, the overall learning outcomes of our Gen X programs are five. Um, critical thinking, reasoning, quantitative and digital skills, communication skills, a national outlook, and a global outlook. And cross-cutting throughout the programs are uh, the principles of leadership, entrepreneurial thinking, and environmental awareness. Um, so as you can see in this current slide, um, we move from being teacher-centered to student-centered. So the whole pedagogy um, had to change. So we had more of project learning, problem-based learning, work-based learning, and so forth. So we move to the next slide, please. So as I was saying earlier on, um, in the third year of the four-year programs, we have this discovery year. And again, the objective is to push students out of comfort zone. And 100% of our students need to leave the university. And 80% of our students leave the country. So the students have a choice of at least one activities. They may be doing one or two semesters study abroad they may be doing internship either in the country overseas, doing an incubation project or a substantive community outreach project. Next, please. Um, so, um, like I was saying earlier on, about 80% of our students leave the country. So we cover six continents. Um, we try as much as possible to disperse our students. Um, so that no, we don't have too many students in one place, um, so that they would be mixing more with the locals and being and having that survival skills. Um, next, please. So that's the background of our programs in UBD. Um, but Brunei, oops, um, can we go back to that previous? Yes, uh, but Brunei is no exception. Sorry, can you go back to the previous slide, please? Yes, there. Yes, here, please. Thank you. Um, so Brunei is no exception um, in terms of uh, getting affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we first reported our first case of COVID-19 on the 9th of March, 2020. And immediately, Brunei exercised measures to practice social and physical distancing. Um, but how we responded from the university was that within three days, all our modules went fully online. As you can see, quite a lot of our students go overseas, especially during the discovery year. Uh, we had to recall back all of our students um, that were overseas at, at that time, but also postponed students who were about to leave the country. We actually restarted calling students back in late January uh, when COVID-19 was reported in China. Um, Alhamdulillah, Brunei is handling the COVID-19 situation very well. Um, the government has managed to curb um, COVID-19 in the country, and now the country is undergoing de-escalation phases. Um, so at the university, we're aligning to that as well. And we have brainstormed and had a lot of discussions and feedback to see what would be next for the university. How do we respond? So our new norm for the university would be structured, blended, student-centered learning, 
uh, as our new norm for teaching and learning. Um, next, please. Um, next, please. Um, so when we went fully online, which was three days, within three days of the first COVID-19 case, um, we ensured that there was a lot of communication across the university. Um, and we had feedback of students from four weeks after the start of online learning. Um, so overall, it was acceptable to excellent for most students. About 93% of students said it was accept acceptable to excellent. Um, although some said there were challenges of increased workload or assignments, and also being online consumed a lot of data, um, especially for students who were using their mobile phones. But also some students were experiencing unstable internet, especially at home or having no access to internet at all. On the positive side, um, it gave them more independence. They were able to adapt to learning online and they felt that they could be more organized. Um, on the negative side, because a lot of students were going back home and parents were working from home as well, so it's, they could easily get distracted at home. And at that time, because suddenly everything went online, there was a lot of uncertainty on assessment and they find group work was more challenging because they were in their own respective homes. Um, other things, expectation from students, they wanted more free material, more free books available. Um, they wanted more time for their assignments because they felt the workload increased. So we did, we did increase our semester by a week um, to give this leeway. Um, and assignments at that time were a mix of um, coursework, we had open book examination and some online examination as well. Um, they wanted more support on Wi-Fi, they wanted more data, and they want they wish they could have their personal space at home. So these were the feedback, feedbacks that we were getting um, right from the beginning when we went fully online. Um, next, please. So there were pro and cons of full online teaching. Uh, what we could see as the pros was that we have been using Canvas for several years now in UBD. And what we found was some of the pros was that we could digitally record and manage um, the materials that we delivered online. Um, and the materials online we can reuse again and with improvements um, and hence uh, they, this would be reducing workload as well for the academics. Um, so it gives us the ability to continuously improve um, our online teaching. Um, and with Canvas as well, we can also increase, we can also do quizzes just to test our students um, to see where they are in their learning. Um, by doing quizzes, we were able to recognize poorly or highly performing students right from the early stage. We found this we could actually detect um, poorly or highly performing students even from week two. And it gives us some more flexibility working time for both lecturers and students as well. Um, of course, the cons, there's less person-to-person -person contact. Um, and of course, we feel visceral presence in the campus is still important. So of course, some students felt that face-to-face -face teaching was still very important. Um, online, we could not see the body language and you miss, the appreciate, you miss to appreciate the personality of both your lecturers and students. Um, next, please. Um, so now we're at our de-escalation de phase um, and throughout, even before that, we have been debating a lot what would be the new norm for us at UBD, how do we move forward? Um, so we've come up that we wanted to have a more structured, blended, but more student-centric learning. So our teaching and learning center has become vital to this. They've come up with a checklist and I've just on the
blended learning for all staff. Um, and this is run by the Teaching and Learning Center. Most of these workshops are actually carried online. Um, the other thing that we have introduced, which is new, is a skills upgrading point system for our academics. That means each academic must accumulate points every year. Um, so we collect points on an annual basis. Um, so these points are based on what workshops they have attended or what workshops they have delivered or facilitated. Um, this formed the basis, for example, for our promotion criteria. Next, please. Um, so when we are moving forward, uh, when we said structured blended learning and student-centered learning, um, blended learning, as you know, is a mix of online and face-to-face. -face. However, um, when you have face-to-face -face teaching, it can be either teacher-centered or student-centered. It's the same for online learning or online teaching. It can be teacher-centered or student-centered. So moving forward is important that we move towards blended learning, but it also has to be student-centered learning. Next, please. So, um, next, please, again. Mm -hmm. So, traditionally, when we are giving face-to-face Traditionally, when we're giving face-to-face -face lectures or tutorials, um, it's mainly teacher-centered. However, when we go into either blended or full online learning, we can still be teacher-centered. Um, that means we can still be the resource person who delivers all the teachings, but the only difference is that it is online or through blended mode. So this is what we don't want to do, is just going from face-to-face -to, -face to online, but remaining to be teacher-centered. Next one, please. So just to expand this a little bit, um, this is where model one, this is teacher-centric, doing your face-to-face -face learning, um, but the teacher there in the center is, is delivering all the materials to the students, either in the lecture, tutorials, or in the laboratory, and so forth. Um, the second model will be in the next um, slide, please. So when you're going fully online, the same thing can happen. The teacher, although it's online, can still be delivering the materials in a teaching teacher-centric manner. So here is giving out lectures or tutorials or even laboratory work. Um, it's done online, but it's still teacher-centric. The third one, please, next one. And again, you can still be teacher-centric, but in a blended learning mode. That means a combination of face-to-face -face and online learning. Next one, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. So, next, please. Yeah. So, what we want to ensure is that we're moving actually from teacher-centric to student-centric. Um, so this could be in a form of, for example, pre-recorded pre lectures, where before you meet the students for the in the tutorials, um, the students can have, within their, within their own time, watch your pre-recorded lectures. Um, lectures could be in the form of your delivery of materials, but you could be including, for example, some videos, um, some graphs, some pictures, and so forth. 
And the same for giving reading materials. So you give them the lectures and reading materials prior they come for a face-to-face -face tutorial. Um, so in between, you can be also giving them online discussions or quizzes. Next one, please. So this is a, that was a blended but student-centric teaching. Um, next one, please. Um, so allow me just to give you an example of one of our modules in UBD. Um, this is one of the modules. Um, as you can see, this is a lecture, a, a module where there are many students. Usually there are more than 400 students. And, and what we do is deliver the lecture online where the students can watch this lecture at any time before they come for the tutorials. Um, tutorials are smaller where there are 25 to 30 students in each tutorial. Um, but before they come to tour, to, to, before they attend the tutorials, you have the chance to give them quizzes um, to, in, to see the understanding or to gauge how they have understood um, the lectures that they have watched or have gone through the reading materials. Oops, um, sorry, can you go back? Hello, Dr. Anita. Uh, can you go back to the slide where I was at, please? Okay. Dr. Joyce, do you want to control the slides of uh, Dr. Anita? Okay, so... I think we have to continue. Sir um, Mel, please uh, click on the next slide. Sorry, we're not able to control our slide from this side. Um, it's being blocked at the moment, so we can't control our slides. Um, if you don't mind, can we go back to the slide where we were at before? Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem, ma'am. We're working on it. Okay, let's just uh, wait for a while uh, due to technical difficulties. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, sorry about that. Um, so, so, sorry about that. I'll just continue. So, um, so let me just go back. The, in this module, um, there could be at least 400 students and the students are able to watch the lectures any time before they attend the tutorials, which could be another day. Um, the tutorials typically could be consisting of 25 to 30 students. And, um, but before they attend the tutorials, you're able to give them quizzes to see how well they have understood the lectures or any reading materials given beforehand. So when they come to the tutorial, um, they can have their discussion, um, group presentation, and, and then what they can do is they will submit via online their group video project or their report and so forth. Um, next one, please.
So I just want to give an example. This is one of the um, quiz scores that we've had for a particular module. Um, so once the students have watched a video and have read the relevant reading materials, before they come to the tutorials, uh, we give them quizzes. Um, as you can see on this graph, uh, the horizontal line, which is the x-axis, is the weak number. And the y-axis or the vertical line is the score. So those are the student scores which are plotted there. Um, there's scores for the quizzes. So if you can see in the first few weeks, some students scored not so well in the quizzes. So this allowed individual professors to actually contact the students, um, either face-to-face -face or online, just to see whether they would need extra help in understanding um, some of the lecture materials or reading materials. So with this, as you can see, with the num weak numbers, uh, following week numbers, you can see the students' quiz scores have improved. Um, so in this, there's a lot of engagement between students and professors. Uh, next, please. Um, next, please. Um, so, so that's what we have been doing during the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, going from fully online with the first case of um, COVID-19, but now we're going through de-escalation phases. So moving ahead, we're going for structured blended, but student-centric learning. Um, another aspect of our learning that I'd like to touch upon is our global discovery program. This is our short programs, um, which includes our summer programs. So for many years, UBD have been offering summer or short programs to international students, whereby they would stay in Brunei for a few weeks to undergo this program. So it could be on biodiversity, for example, or it could be, for example, another topic would be Brunei culture. Uh, but because during this COVID-19 pandemic, we're unable to take incoming or inbound students. Um, so what we have done is to replace this with an e-global discovery program. Um, can I have the next slide, please? So e-global discovery program, uh, these are our short programs um, and they come in two parts. The first part, is totally done online um, and it consists of interactive sessions. Um, so we did this, we started this in July and we had a number of students from overseas, including from our partners institutions who enrolled in our e-global discovery program. So um, that one was on Brunei culture and whereby there was a lot of interaction online on our culture, our language, our local delicacies, um, our pristine rainforests. Um, so that was the first part of our discovery program. Um, the second part of the e-global discovery program will, be, will take place once the travel restrictions have been lifted. And this is where the students who, uh, who took part in the first part of the e-global discovery program will be coming to Brunei um, to finish off their programs. So we did one in July 2020. And inshallah, this Monday, we'll be running another one, which that will start this coming 17th to the 22nd of August. Uh, next one, please. Next one, please. So another thing um, that was very important during this COVID-19 pandemic um, was the ability to actually provide programs for the public. And 
our alumni. Uh, we have the Center for Lifelong Learning, uh, which offer programs um, which could be involved in programs to upskill and reskill. Um, they are three P's um, to this um, to the programs that we offer. Um, the first one is the first P is pace. So that means students who enroll in our Center for Lifelong Learning can be taking their modules as fast as they want or as slow as they want. So it's according to the pace. The second is place. Um, because typically it would be 70% online and 30% face-to-face. So they do not need to come to campus um, for the whole program. So it's more flexible in terms of place and more flexible for those who are actually working or, for example, doing their own businesses. Uh, so they don't have to make, uh, they ha don't have to come to campus each time. The third P is path. So students may be doing a module because they are curious or they want to upskill on reskill. So for example, a student may choose to take an entrepreneurship module uh, because they want to learn more about entrepreneurship. Or the students may stack up their modules and they may come up with a certificates um, after that. So they may get, for example, the Bachelor of digital economy, for example, or the master of government and so forth. But during this COVID-19 pandemic, what we have done is move from blended learning to full online learning for all the programs that were offered by the Center for Lifelong Learning. Um, other than that, we have also started to introduce um, micro modules which carry micro credits um, so these are smaller form of modules that we offer to the public because what we found was that during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, public were doing a lot of online businesses, for example, um, and they were exploring new business ventures. So we wanted to support that. So we started offering micro modules with micro credits, in example, in in areas with digital perspective, for example, or basic accounting, for example, to support the public. So we have continued with this lifelong learning and our micro modules uh, have continued and we are increasing more programs to this. Next slide, please. So, we believe lifelong is very important. Um, as we say, um, the higher education landscape changes all the time. And I'd like to quote this by Alvin Toffler. The illiterate of the 21st century are not those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Next slide, please. So I would like to leave with this tagline. This is a tagline of the University of UBD, which is a university of innovation and enterprise. Um, so it cuts across all our major domains across the university, which of course includes our teaching and learning that we continuously continue to innovate, but also integrating enterprise um, in our teaching and learning, as well as other domains um, that is offered in the university. Um, I end my presentation. Um, I am sorry that it was cut in various places. I think we got cut off uh, several times, um, but I do invite should there be any questions. Thank you, Dr. Brunei Darussalam. It's okay, ma'am. Um, that's normal when we face such technical difficulties. But what matters more? Sorry, I think so, we've lost you there. Ma'am, Anita? Sorry, I think Anita? we lost you. Yeah, you're back on now. There's some questions. 
But what struck me most in your presentation is you are really after student-centered instruction, which is uh, actually what uh, we need now, especially that uh, kids are very, kids or students are very creative. They can learn on their own. Gave uh, a room for students' creativity. And your teachers are now guys on the side and not sages on the stage. Okay, so at this point, we give you, Dr. Anita, your e-certificate. So we will just send you this via email. So let me read the text. Certificate of Appreciation. Sharing her time and expertise as a resource speaker during the webinar on Cohesive and Responsive Action 2020. The insights she shared are truly significant in Region 1 and in Southeast Asia, ready to embrace the new normal in education. Amid the pressing issues of our time, we have learned to celebrate our ASEAN identity and its timeless values of cooperation and respect for each other's individuality to a more peaceful, stable, Office 1, City of San Fernando, La Union, Philippines. Signed, Rogelio T. Galera, OIC Director 4. Again, thank you very much. And thank you very much, Doc. Do you have any parting words to our viewers here in the Philippines and all over the, all, all over the world? Mm -hmm. Well, thank Sign you up. very much. So thank you very much for having me this afternoon. Um, like I was saying earlier, it's always a pleasure to speak on an ASEAN platform, um, having coming from an ASEAN country. Um, but I would like to say hello to friends. Um, I think all the speakers here are all very familiar faces. So it's good to see them again, but also to hello to those in the audience. Uh, do take care. Um, and I think... Um, stay safe during this difficult time but we look forward to moving ahead um maybe to restart especially our work with partner institutions worldwide um so do take care and thank you very much thank you very much to ma'am and please take care also thank you May we now proceed to our last topic. So our last speaker is a graduate of Master of Science in Geography at State University of Kharkov, Ukraine in 1980 and in the same university. His professional expertise include geography, history, forestry, and environmental protection. His passion for research and extension is undeniably evident as he is engaged in community-based researches and a community-based natural resource management research with Mekong Watch, Graduate School of Agriculture and Life Sciences University of Tokyo. Presently, he is a in the same capacity at Lao University Sports Federation. Let us all welcome Dr. Somsi Nofang Sai, who will talk about NUOL's preventive measures during the COVID-19 pandemic. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Okay, are you hear me? Okay, sir, we'll be giving you the Okay, per let me start. I have to send to you. Uh, my name is uh, Sumsi Yohan Sai, the president of the National University of Laos. Uh, 
First of all, I would like to wish all of us, the uh, uh, UN members who use this in occasion uh, 53 years in the history of ASEAN community. So uh, this uh, online meeting, I think it's uh, important uh, in order to implement the three pillar of the ASEAN community uh, strategy. Uh, according to the uh, schedule and program that you provide to me, the topic, uh, you let me to present to you or discuss uh, with you about the uh, preventive issue implemented in the academic community of the National University of, uh, of Laos during the COVID-19. So, uh, my uh, outline that I would like to uh, present to you that I have a fine uh, point. The first is the uh, situation of the COVID-19 in Laos. The second preventive issue in response to COVID-19 taken by the government of Laos. The test is the country continues with lockdown, imposed with limited exception. The first university is to understate the ministries of education, education COVID-19 response plan. The fifth plus one, some preventive measures implemented in the academic community of university during the covid 19 pandemic. So, in general, we understand about the impact of the COVID 19 to our general uh, family and especially for the uh, education uh, of our uh, network, UN, or region of the world. So the first question of the COVID in Laos, uh, at the beginning, why there were no confirmed COVID-19 case in the Laos? Our country remained highly vulnerable as the country shares border with the five countries. And there are many travelers from countries that have reported COVID-19 cases. Nevertheless, the woman is focusing on preventive and response measures, including preparing in many areas to the possible case of COVID-19 in the future. However, the COVID-19 case in La Priya as the first round we also have the, the, the two rounds. The first round, uh, since March up to last of June, uh, we had a uh, 19 case. And and uh, they don't have to die people and 19 record and only the last month june july we have the one round one 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 case more the important from the uh, uh from the korean korean people korean person what case now still in the hospital uh, so we have the, now uh, 20 cases. Uh, no dies. So, uh, what the government has done with the MISU taken to prevent the COVID-19 at the beginning? Since January 2020, uh, is the government of the LAPDA has the undertaken initial preventive and response issue 
against COVID-19 as below. The government has established a national prevention, control and response task force committee on COVID-19 with the deputy minister, uh, prime minister as the head of the committee, uh, comprising of relevant ministries the committee has carried out its duties with a higher responsibility, which will include raising awareness among the public on the danger of COVID-19, and how to prevent and reduce the risk of infection, imposing strict quarantine on travelers and entering Lao PDR by screening body temperature and separating those with suspected COVID-19 from the general public in order to reduce the risk of transmission. Anyone with symptoms under the criteria of suspected COVID-19 will be tested and a result of the diagnosis will be confirmed accordingly Ensuring the preparedness of hospital with its own room for suspected COVID-19 patients and treatment in case of any confirmed case. Providing clinical training for doctors, nurses, and staff from simulation exercise in response to COVID-19. Preventive measure, the second uh, point is uh, preventive measure in response to COVID-19 uh, taken by the women. Why I talk about the uh, uh, response to COVID-19 taken by the women? The National University of Laos, or my university, belong to, belong to the women or women university. Uh, the preventive issue in response to the COVID-19 by the women uh, of Lao are close, close on local and customers, uh, customary border checkpoint across the country. As for international border checkpoints, only those that fully ensured and equipment necessary equipment and staff for standardized screening and detecting uh, suspected infected person will be allowed to open. Suspend the insurance of all kind of visa on arrival, including e-visa and tourist visas for all nation, national for the next 30 days for those who already have obtained and tried uh, visa to Laos, they must also attack a health certificate and a hospital records of his her activities over the past 14 days before entering Laos. As for visa, a uh, certificate uh, and a hospital record of her uh, his activities over the uh, 14 days uh, without assumption countries the government has uh, decided to uh, temporarily suspend sub assumption until further notice except who hold diplomatic and official passport avoid traveling abroad in this period, especially by air and mass transportation. Those traveling from
while we see to come back online um we greet our uh, viewers all over the country and uh, all over asia so we have our viewers from abra sultan kudarat rizal quezon city tarlac quezon province laguna bukidnon Uh, our viewers from Tacloban, Batangas, or Mock City, Pasig, Dinagat Island, Laguna, Tawi Tawi, Antal, Pampanga, and Pangasinan. We also have our viewers from Malaysia, Indonesia, Laos, Thailand, and Brunei. Don't forget to like our Facebook page, Ched uh, Regional Office 1, and our uh... So, uh, is he back, sir? Or... So, sir... that after this webinar, we'll have uh, other activities lined up on August 14 to 27. And you are all encouraged here in Region 1 to join our infographics making contest, on the spot essay writing contest, digital art making, spoken word. also have an activity for instructors so calling all instructors you may join in the online teaching demo contest so see you all on august 14 to so let's welcome back dr sorry we have internet problem you may now continue sir. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Okay. I continues the preventive issue in the response to COVID nineteen taken by a woman. So as I was sent to you from um, Isu. Uh, still, we have a clo closed on uh, entertainment business, uh, karaoke and music service, uh, but other business may operate as a uh, issue, and, uh, but uh, must have basic uh, precautionary and preventive issues such as temperature scale, uh, scans and hand, uh, hand sanitizer for customers to protect themselves and others. Uh, temporarily close all nurseries, preschool, primary school, and all academic and educational institutions, public and private, across the country until further notice. In the meanwhile, the meantime, in the meantime, there must be coordination will, with own school for an urgent consultation and discussion to identify policy or instructions on how to uh, promote teaching and learning through online television, radio, newspaper, and others. The Senate uh, 14 days quarantine area for in about travelers from high risk countries, including uh, Lao workers and students returning home for the Lao New Year festival. There will be uh, a separate instruction for the Lao uh, migrant workers. Advice all Lao nation country uh, currently stay abroad 
to postpone their return home until the global pandemic uh, situation is under control. The third point, the country continues with the lockdown imposed with the limited exception. Everyone, so let us uh, wait again for Dr. Somsi to come back. Um, we uh, would like to inform everybody that uh, after the last speaker, we will be flashing the link where you can see the evaluation form. So when you fill that out, it's... Um, a minute because they're already uh, connecting with us. So uh, ah. so before anything else, I would like to announce for August 14 to 27. So I hope you already have received the communication so you can see the guidelines in the following activity. So we have infographics making, on-the-spot essay writing, digital art making, spoken word poetry, online canvas painting, in our online teaching demo contest. So we'll see you on August 14 to 27, and we'll be giving away prizes. So I hope you'll join in the virtual floor back to Dr. Somsi. Dr. Somsi. Okay, can I continue? Uh, sorry very much uh, for this uh, situation. It's okay, sir. You so know the me. first point of my presentation is uh, universities to undertake the Ministry of Education, Education COVID-19 response plan. Uh, in conjunction to the Lao women's issue taken for, for COVID-19, the Ministry of Education, Laos and so have the education COVID-19 response plan, which cover different levels of education, include, including uh, universities, vocational and technical colleagues, as part of higher education, but universities may have more issues to be considered in the practice of the plan implementation. It is highlighted that the coronavirus disease is a, an infection, a disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus. The COVID-19 outbreak is a global public health crisis. In this connection, most of the women around the world have temporarily closed educational institution in an uh, attempt to control the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has also occurred and the law education and sports sector with the uh, national wise closer impacting more than 1 million students. The education COVID-19 response plan has been developed by the Ministry of Education and Sports uh, with the support of uh, UNICEF and in collaboration with the education cluster. Ministry of Education led the education cluster with a UNICEF and saved the children as a co leads. The intent is to use this plan as a key reference for intervention of the Ministry of Education and Development Partners 
uh, to mitigate the impact of the pandemic on the education sectors and ensure the health and well-being of students and education staff as well as support community uh, of learning, continue to do learning. Uh, the objective of this response plan are uh, as the following. The first uh, support uh, learners, educators, uh, givers, parents, uh, and school communities to prevent the transmission and spread of COVID-19 in line with national public health guidance and ensure the well-being of learning and education staff. Second, ensure continuity of learning through the implementation of diverse key learning activities, opportunities aimed at a quality learning and well-being of the learners, teacher, uh, uh, caregivers, parents, uh, school communities taking into account equity and inclusively, inclusivity. The third support the staff and inclusive return to school educational institution for learners, teachers, uh, caregivers, patients, uh, parents, uh, school committees, and forced and sure a coordinated institution for learners, teachers, uh, caregivers, parents, school committees, uh, uh, respond to COVID-19 prevention and control measures for the education sector in connection with other sectors. However, UNUSTI is now have the internal measures taken as part of COVID-19 prevention and control, which is under and the conjunction with the government and the Ministry of Education guidance and plan. Especially uh, National University of Laos. Uh, of Laos. Uh, it is the country's key and biggest public ministry that is representing the higher education country currently. The Plus one, plus point, uh, or fifth point. Some preventive measures implemented in the academic community of the university during the COVID-19 pandemic. With reference to the Ministry of Education and National University of Lao announcement on protective, protective measures against the spread of COVID-19 that, that on 25 February 2020, it has now been established that the inflation has continued to spread unabated. The university has realized that danger and serious macro. It is therefore necessary to implement the mission to prevent the spread of such infection to ensure the health of students and staff as well as the members of their families in this regard. In response to the Ministry of Education suggestion and plan, the National Ministry of Laos so called COVID-19 response for our passport team was formed at the time as it is to function and work on prevention and control of the COVID-19 at UNISD. They are now mostly responsible for the coordination and reporting to the government. In line with the government's uh, guidance and order from time to time from the start 
and during my COVID-19 outbreak until now. Yes, the university also has its specific preventive measures used to control the COVID-19 and keep it normal practice in academic and administrative mode. Why effectively practicing social or physical distancing? distancing. In the situation that the country declared on lockdown, on lockdown and travel, travel restriction, as I mentioned above, the adopted initial broad measure taken for USD and academic committee are the first uh, working from home and second uh, teaching online and what we are thinking and feeling concerned in the past of university committee is that our staff and students traveling and staying uh, contact well within and outside the country that could lead to the widespread of uh, COVID-19. We therefore have the specific preventive measure taken and implemented internally and it is still now effective for university even the country is locked down was then uh, lifted a bit earlier and it is imposed again now. It is noted here with the National University of Laos is take undertaking its uh, internal mission in conjunction or in line with the government's guidance and order implemented by the uh, Ministry of Education and some specific, uh, some specific item uh, of the mission uh, added due to the specific condition and practices by university. The National University, university of Laos is the only higher institution in the country that has big number of both, uh, about and about students so that the university is required to have the kind of comprehensive uh, information provided for both involved and about students, particularly the international student currently uh, studying at the National University of Laos. At the moment, the National University of Laos has two levels of COVID-19 response. They are or operate call it as University's Monitoring Committee or team. Uh, this is a uh, comprises uh, of uh, faculties, institutes, center and office called uh, as a faculty uh, review and industry COVID-19 task force called uh, as a university task force team. These are implementing the university's uh, preventive measures. Uh, as uh, according the National University of Lao, we so not of announcement, which has been updated from time to time, uh, stating that uh, students or staff members who have traveled to uh, or transited at countries or administrative area at risk uh, of uh, COVID-19 and returned to Laos within the period of time started uh, obligated to uh, go for screening and monitoring for COVID-19 from the date of the white arrival and it is to refer to the government's uh, guidance on step and self quarantine. The student or staff members shown stay updated with university and they are supposed, supposed to uh, prefer uh, from 
going to classes or work until they undergo the screening and monitoring for COVID-19 in accordance with this announcement. After undergoing infection uh, in uh, screening and monitoring in accordance with this announcement, the students or staff members are uh, obligated to inform and uh, produce a physician report to their faculty university state uh, task force team or vice president in charge as, as soon as possible. Once, info, once informed of the screening and monitoring for COVID-19, the faculty or task force team uh, should consult the physician report and decide uh, uh, what about to uh, order to student or staff members to take a leave, uh, a leave of absence. Where appro uh, appropriate permission should be granted to the said student staff members to take a leave of absence until their symptoms are fully treated or for 14 days from the day of their arrival to Laos. During COVID-19, there is no permission allowed to staff and student. But uh, if it is uh, requested, uh, it should not be granted to students or staff members to travel to or transit at countries or administrative area at risk of COVID-19 infection as uh, designated by the university. Students or staff members should avoid making uh, overseas trips and uh, refrain from traveling to countries or administrative area at risk of COVID-19 infection in order to prevent uh, the spread of COVID-19 infection and to demonstrate social resp uh, responsibility from the time of uh, announcement until now. Students or staff members who have traveled to the transited at con countries or in administrative area areas of COVID-19 infection and arrive back, uh, arrive back to uh, Laos, uh, regardless of the with, uh, the sub trip of work related or personnel obligated to go to screening and uh, monitoring for infection in the first instance at the university or medical facilities with uh, equivalent standards of quality for infection screening and monitoring within 14 days of the arrival and report the faculty or university's task force team as the case may be in accordance with uh, the guidance guideline uh, announced by the university. If, in, if infection or risk of infection of COVID-19 has been uh, diagnosed, and the faculty or university task force team, as the case may be shown, uh, based on the physician's report, uh, or the, the person to refrain from going to classes or work and to receive full treatment or be monitored for 14 days after returning to Laos. The faculty or university task force uh, who has ordered uh, student, a student or staff members to take leave for the purpose of being monitored uh, for infection as uh, stated in the announcement uh, may assign tasks to the person while on 
play for symptom monitoring purpose. Information regarding the screening and monitoring for COVID-19 vaccination of students or staff members should be kept uh, confidential. As advice and not taking uh, invitation from and to overseas subjects uh, first to oversee quest and uh, participate uh, in academic activities, conference, seminars, or any other act activities concerning the university between the time mentioned uh, should be cancelled or postponed. Uh, any authorized ex uh, expense actually incurred prior to this announcement should be reimbursed. Uh, we did not uh, of announcement by the president of university, the faculty of university uh, task force team should continue to consider cancelling or postponing any activities that involve a large number of people gathering and interacting in the place inside and outside country. It is noted that non compliant to this announcement or lawful orders of the superiors in accordance with this announcement represent a breach or serious of the discipline as the case may be uh, and carry legal uh, sequences. Thank you. Sir Somsi for COVID-19 preventive and control measures are very effective because checking at the record, you only have 20 cases and uh, there are no related to COVID-19. So congratulations, sir, for that effective prevention and control measures. Congratulations also to the government of Lao. So now we're waiting for uh, some questions. Perhaps we can also adopt. Sorry, we cannot hear from you. As for schemes in our own schools. Not clear. I cannot hear. Okay. So, sir, at this juncture, your e-certificate. So let me read the text. Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Professor Dr. Somsi Nopansai, President of National University of Lao, for generously sharing his time and expertise as a resource speaker during the webinar on cohesive. I'm not heard. I'm not clear. It's not clear. Not clear yeah higher education institutions in Region 1 and in Southeast Asia, ready to embrace a new normal in education. Amid the pressing issues of our time, we have learned to celebrate of cooperation and respect for each other's individuality to a more peaceful and stable, prosperous ASEAN. Given this 12th day of August 2020, the Commission on Higher Education, Regional Office 1, City of San Fernando, La Union, Philippines. Signed, Rogelio T. Galera, OIC Director. To Professor Dr. Somsi Novansai. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. Thank you for giving us your time and sharing us your expertise. Do you have any words here in the Philippines and abroad? Any message, sir, that you want to share with us? 
Final message, sir? Not, uh, not, not uh, from you. Uh, not clear. The, uh, final message, doctor. Here in the Philippines and uh, other countries. Okay, again, thank you. Okay, I think a little bit, uh, internet not so valuable for us, uh, but in a talk uh, online conference or discussion among us, I think it is uh, impacted uh, from the COVID-19. So we have to gather uh, the UN network have to be uh, closely more. Although we don't uh, follow the concept of the people to people closely, uh, but we can from the distance uh, online uh, speaking or face to face by online, uh, we can continue to uh, look for the way to uh, cooperate how to link to the for the future, uh, especially how to uh, improve our uh, higher education network, ASEAN University network for the future. I hope we have to look the way together. Uh, from, from this uh, uh, meeting, I show the Professor Dr. Sutis, who is executive director of a UN secretary. Uh, I'm happy to hear from him and from the Philippine Higher Education, uh, who are the host of this meeting. I think it's important for, for us uh, uh, to news cooperate with us. Thank you very much. If you have a question, please you can. Uh, ask or discuss with me. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Somsi. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Give to our speakers and to us also, Dr. Povong, Dr. Joyce, Dr. Andy, Mr. Korn, Dr. Salifa, Dr. who helped our resource speakers. And of course, the AUN Secretariat. So thank you very much. So we will now show you the link where you can access the evaluation, evaluation tool. So... Only. So should you want to have your certificate, please fill that out until 6 p.m. only. Okay? So by engineer Angelica Q. Dolores, OIC Chief Education Program Specialist, CHED Region 1. In behalf of the Commission on Higher Education, we would like to thank our friends, colleagues, thank you for joining our webinar on Cohesive and Responsive ASHA 2020 towards strengthening educational collaboration among ASEAN higher education pandemic. Today is indeed a day of productive collaboration and learning. We would also like to extend our gratitude to the Asian University Network for sharing their time, knowledge, and resources 
Your support is a testament that we are not alone in everyone, even to our academic community. Adjusting to the new normal is not easy. We recognize partners like you who guide and assist us. The Philippine education sector will sure, surely continue to drive with organizations like you. To our higher education institutions, the Commission on Higher Education Regional Office 1 in particular, will continue to be with you in these trying times. Gently work to strengthen our education system amid the pandemic through cohesive and responsive projects, plans, and programs. Rest assured that we will successfully hurdle this crisis. As we initiate more discussions and programs, may we still have your presence and support in all of our future endeavors. If there is a time that we need to be stronger and more unified, it is in today's adversity. And responsive action. Happy Ashen Month 2020 to one and all. Thank you, Engineer Dolores. To our viewers, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. On behalf of CHED Region 1, we would like to thank our resource speakers, ASEAN University Network, and to all our viewers. And as my parting words, I would like to quote our regional director's message. This is not a time for It's not a time for complacency, but a time for innovation. Cohesiveness and relevance are our silver lining in these difficult time times. Thank you very much. This is Al Jarrett saying Happy Ashen Month 2020 to all. Asian Way is caring as in way between us I see and still unites as Tightness, since we are always one. Heart believes what we believe in, no one will be left behind. So we up to the sky, since we are always one. Let's share our spirits to heal the world. Let
is to heal the world. Let all consonants speak out loud. Let the light be Set an online appointment with Chet Regional Office 1. Visit Chet Region 1's synchronized online appointment and public assistance client's desk portal or so. SOAP is a user-friendly, web-based online scheduling system that allows you to see laptops, personal computers, and tablets. SOAP services include CAD application, SO application, STUFAPS concerns, UNIFAP, technical assistance, complaints, inquiries, and other concerns. SOAP is an online one-stop shop for your documents and communication needs. Visit soap.chedro1.com and schedule your online appointment.